Hello folks, and welcome back to Court Farm. Here we are, it is literally bang on one o'clock, and we've got some work to do today. So, last episode we've done all the ridging on our field, so all the fields like 110, 45, 90, 88, have all got ridges along with 6 and 10. Now, we need to see them, so... What we're going to be doing is, red beets is going to be six. Actually, you know what? Let's do carrots. Yeah, something. Yeah, carrots on six and ten. Then going up, 110 and 45 would be parsnip. And then red beets would be 90 and 88. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. We've leased out a second cedar. That is at the farm, and yeah, we have run out of seeds, so I just got an apple, a bunch of seeds, so 24,000 litres. This is from the multi-crop greenhouse. On that, we need some more fuel at some point, so whilst I was down here, I collected a few pallets of gandrums, gan well not gandrums, but barrels of diesel, so I know transport diesel and seeds is a bit. Eh, could be worse, could be fertilizer. God, that would be a very combustive load, potentially. Oh, yeah, we're taking steady. Really, we should have our hazards on, lights on. So, yeah, we'll get it zoomed up. And then, yeah, we'll just go straight to the seed in. I also need to do the rolling on fields, well, 52, 3 and 4 and that, and 107, that's got the corn in, and then 55, 7, 8 and 9 on 109, has got, oh, what was it, soybeans, no not soybeans, sunflower, sunflower to get sunflower oil, corn for soybeans, I may keep some of the corn I know, I was all about yeah, I knew he just goes on about getting pigs and that, so maybe it's worth keeping some corn left over with some of the potatoes to get pig foods. Ooh, that was close there with the traffic. Get rid of that. Well, I'm not sure actually. Well, think about closer to the time as always. Leave it till future envoys problem to deal with, so. Anyways, here we are at the farm. See, I think I've got mostly everything here. Mine's got down obviously a bit more as well, not just because we've been purchasing stuff, but also because of... There we go, he's going in. Just gone and repair everything as well, like servicing our equipment and that. There we go, just put the unstrap and unstrap. Just to get rid of that sort of snapping sound with the straps. Now, with the fuel, can they just go in here? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, they got the transport needs. Ah, bugger. Try to run it down. Is that going in? No, so... Looks like we need to one of the tankers, so if I say get this positioned like so over here. There we go. And now I'm just hope, hoping Ah, that's gonna be full, I think. Where's the other one for the mill? Actually what's here? How much milk have we got? Oh two thousand years. Let's see if it's empty. Oop. No, that's four, so we need to sell that at some point, but where's the other tanker to? So there we go. Gone and grabbed the tanker that was at the cookie factory now, so now let's get this loaded up. I 
sorry. No, no, don't that. What we want is to grab the barrels. So, can we do that? No, ah, uh, no. So, actually, you know what? Let's do it from the other side because, yeah. We don't want to take it from the actual main tank, we want to take it from these, so... This is going to take some time, so... Let's quickly get this all loaded up. So, with that sorted, let's go and put this in storage. Yeah, just move that out of the way, why not? And that is empty, and we're just dragging that with us. Oop. Right, that's made my life difficult there for when we need to move out, but for now we will leave that there for the time being. Uh, we'll just dump that there. So yeah, we need to get everything hooked up, so we'll hook up the cedar here. I think yeah, these are like very small capacities, right? Oof. Instantly, 32 litres, so Let's go and start seeing, I think, so park that here ready. Do we use the fent for rolling? How worn is that now? 93%. You know what? Let's get this one rolled in. Why not? So, because then what we can do is lease a third cedar now. Then yeah, get two workers on the way doing the fields. And then we can just do one ourselves or do the road in. I'll say that I'll make it the worker do the road in because yeah that's been done before now. So yeah. Give me a sec. Also get it sorted. So we've gone and got the worker started, so we have a look here. We've got three worker started, so one's doing rolling, and we've got the other two just working on six and one ten. And already that is looking nice. I do like that orange. And I do like that purpley red. So so far so good. So what's the workers are doing that? I'm gonna be focusing on up here for a small field 88 because this is going to be a bigger field so I thought we can do the bigger field and that as the workers need helping out they will help them out during out the day but for the time being we will just do our own thing so there it is turn it on let's get a light up with the furrows and we are seeded. The thing is, we can tell where we seeded, where it's gone dark, so that is looking rather good. Have we opened the PDA? Well, apart from the little squiffy bit there, that sort of creamy beige colour, that is looking good rather indeed, so. This will take us a while. And we have 32 litres to see. Like, this only holds 32 litres. And. Definitely thin up a couple of times. So. Maybe we need to look at. Ooh. Leasing a. Auger and that for the season. That. So, under auger wagons. Do you have some of these big ones? We do have this one. It's a bit of an older one. Not that. <laughs> this here. Yeah, it's a bit an old fashioned and downside is a swivel axle. Unless we what's that? 72 grand for that. Ah bugger, so Auger goes out there. Ooh, 
that's the thing. Let me look at some other options. Because, yeah. That's going to be a problem with having some of these bigger augers and that. It's like, would it actually fit? I may have a look at some other options, speak to the dealer and that, and see what else they've got. So, after speaking to the dealership, I have gone and borrowed this John Deere 7R, it's a 250 horsepower, and the seat tender here, so it's got a big old pipe. I am happy with that. So, fold that away, like so. So yeah, we did buy some seed, and I knew, what was it, last episode we bought like 22,000 or so seeds, or whatever. But I thought, since we're down here anyway, so we could always buy just a couple more bags. So yeah, that cost us 5 grand, and the leasing cost is, the so only want, oh, what was it, about 2 grand they did. But they said, pay it end of the day, or tomorrow in June. Whenever we need to lease it for, so it's two grand per day. So obviously, no upfront costs because we paid to see that front, and because we've done a lot of business with the dealership before, for example, with our services and repairs, if you take it down there, we do get a discounted repair service off, what was it, 10 20 percent discount? But yes, so far we are looking good, like the worker. Why? Ugh, there's already gaps in the field because the workers and I've already crashed. It's all going well so far, so yeah, I think we've got a lot of work ahead of us, so yeah, I think what I'll do is quick top up this first seeder here at field 6, and then I'll start taking over with the Massionet, get that field drilled, and then yeah, we'll go from there. And I'll see you folks when we're done, because it's going to take a while, I think. And there we go, we are done with seeding and that took a while, god that took a while but it was done eventually and luckily we had three seeders out to help us out. So you know what we've gone doing is, what we're going to do is we've leased this 
This is the Kubota XTMS446. Basically, this is a sprayer, and I thought, let's do some preventive spraying. I have been meaning to purchase a hay sprayer and that, but just haven't got around to it yet. I'll purchase one. I'm not going to purchase one now, because remember, we've got a lot of things to do. We've got to purchase like two new harvesters on that this year. Ah, just all other things like with the production chains for the the root crops out, the vegetables, the soup factory, the crisp factory and that, so we do need to save a little bit of headroom there. But yeah, what we're gonna do is head to 88 and we'll start spraying that. Because yeah, if we do the preventive spray now, rather than wait for it to be grow and then we either spray them or weed them down next month when in June that when they start growing in that. I think that's what a seven percent yieldage loss we can get if we get these growing so I fall let's get ahead of it rather than waiting for these to grow let's just go and spray in the fields now. Don't get me wrong we will be using a lot more fertilizer for this a lot more herbicides shall I say Actually, can we get into the field? I think if we go and back this up, so there we go. Try to not hit that real close sign. Okay, we're just touching there. Mind the wheels. There we go. And yeah, just watching ourselves going in. And there we go. So yep, yeah, now here's go and unfold this. And this is a huge sprayer, so Yeah, it's like I think something like 40 meters or so this is so this is rather big. Let's raise that up. And actually I wonder do we get the tech like the texture color differences in the ground? For when we spray, no, we do not. So uh, that's going to be a downside. And in fairness, I'm not sure how this is going to work with some of our small fields. Like, I should know 106, that's our grass field, so we don't need to worry about that. I was worried about 106 and that. Now, in fairness, we should be relatively fine. There's no texture differences in the ground, but worst case scenario, if we do get weeds growing, we can always go and lease out a weeder and that, a hoe and that, and do anything we may have missed. I think the best course of action would be do a headland and then come up and down. So, if we say when we come up and down, we line it with. Basically, these bushes here are these trees to our right, so we start from just about here, so before we come up and down. And then, yeah, every so often we do our turnarounds. We should be perfectly aligned. No, I'm missing some on the edges. The downside is I don't want to hit the trees, so. Yeah, there's no way for like in cabin that to keep it aligned. There's no real frame of references because I think they it's a huge sprayer. Ooh, <laughs> do need that, please. And there we go. So I think we'll will be fine. So yeah, I think actually, you know what? I think we'll call it quits here today. It's going to be a short episode. Just because the amount of time I'm going to be spending doing the work in the last two episodes, doing batch recordings of last episode and this episode, so... The next time what we'll do is start doing spraying, or finish off the spraying, shall I say? Because we've already started this, so... And then I think we'll go into June, and we should have some stuff ready to harvest. So, if we have a look here, so we've got... 
our rye and our barley ready in the next episode. Alfalfa, that is a long way away. Yeah, regret planting that. Oops, gone too far over. That's going to mess things up. So, yeah. We've got two fills ready to harvest. Now, because they are up here now, we may use that to make it easier for us to get to the field in terms of my like, purchasing a new combine. So, yeah, I know we purchased, what, the new Holland in that? I don't think that's got many hours on it. What, eight and a half hours? Seven hours on the header itself, so relatively still quite fresh. I, mean, I think we can do with a second one just for when we're doing the harvesting and that, especially with 46. That is a tight field to get into because there's only so many entrances. Okay, wait a minute. Apparently we can do from the spray on that, so I might just waste in wait a minute. Because yeah, I've done this with other crops and that doing preventive spraying and it works. Is it different for the root crops and that? I might just waste it almost a thousand litres on nothing. I don't know, but anyway, so if we say over here, so 46, so there's not many entrances, so if we go down here, we've got one super tight entrance here, and in fairness, I don't know why this fencing is here, like, if this fence wasn't here, these one, two, three, four fences weren't here, I could say we could get that big combine down with the 30 meter header, and get into the field, no problems. Can't even move that, so okay, that scraps that. So, next option is not much better, if not worse, is down here. The combine should be able to fit in here, as I say, should with it. I do not know, so yeah, I'll go in there and then out there into the field, not a problem. It's just that entrance here is a pain in the bum. Only other option is to gain access from field 90. So go for the gateway into the field, not an issue. Go down here, is there an entrance? No, but there is access to 47, which is a barley field. Do we purchase that field, I wonder? Because we're doing barley here anyways. I don't know, but... So anyways, for field 90. And that requires going all the way up here, so... And coming through this area here, so... The big combine can't get through that, I'll say. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do, either go through there. But yeah, with a new combine harvester, I'm thinking, ooh, maybe not the actual flow percentage one fifty. I'm thinking something cheap, well, like one of the hardest ones, or the John Deere nine six ten series. So capacity wise, we're not going unrealistic. So it was like ten thousand years versus. Get another one of those with a smaller header could do. But yeah, I'm thinking cost wise, the Night 610 is a good bang for buck combine harvester. So we say we want extensions, sure. Slight power for engine, sure. We do wide wheels, that's wise on the back. Twins, definitely not. What about Michelin's? Think, in fairness. So yeah, let's say that, design. 
GPS, yes. CB radio, yes. I'll say yes to a long pipe, so that is 120 grand. And that requires the John Deere 625X, a 7.6 meter header. Actually, do I have. I should first of all look at that. 7.6 meters at 2.5 tons. We do have these. Downside is they are heavier at 3.7 tons. But these fold up, so. John Deere down, yes. Ah, wait a minute. John Deere T560. What combines that? Is that the first John Deere? T560. Ah, yeah, that's a bit more powerful. Do we risk it? I think we will. I think, yeah, we'll gamble on that. Saves on the header tray and all that other good stuff. So, yeah. That's what I think we'll do in this episode. So, yeah. That's where I'm going to leave it today. As always, hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button. Feel free to click down below. If you want to share with them, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But, for our choose to do, hope you're going to stay. But for now, it's been far from our Envoy Extreme. And I'll see you all very soon.